We're on chapter 15.8 now, the last chapter of uh, chapter 15, last section of chapter 15, and then we're going to be on to chapter 16. And I'm excited because I'm almost done recording these videos, but when you guys are watching these, it's probably also nearing the end of the semester as well. So it, it's going to be time to then start thinking about, you know, reviewing for the final exam, reviewing for a third midterm, um, stuff like that. So uh this chapter is very important because i almost guarantee you that it will be on your midterm and oh, well it'll be on a midterm or a final at least one of the few so uh let's cover then this problem uh so there's going to be actually before we actually start there's going to be two types of problems that we're going to cover so this first type of problem is going to be um you're given a region and the second type of problem then is a region is defined in the boundaries is defined defined in the limits of integration okay and so what we're doing then is we're doing substitution of multiple integrals and hopefully you guys have had some exposure to this in lecture or uh, in recitation and now we're gonna actually you know be uh, we're, we're actually gonna be calculating these things so Okay, so we get this problem. Let R be the region in the plane bounded with the square with the vertices given, and then you want to evaluate this integral. So the first thing we always do in these types of problems is draw the region. So, okay, so we draw the region, okay? And now what I want to do is I want to plot these points. So let's see, let's say these are one tick each. And so zero, one is right here. One comma two is up here. Two comma one is over here. And then one comma zero is right here. And so uh, our region then is going to be, uh, let's use some color, is going to be this square or kind of square, right? And what do we want to do, right? So this integral is going to be very hard to calculate uh, if we just calculate it like this, because essentially if we do any kind of like dx or dy stuff, you're going to realize that it's going to hit different lines coming in, right? So at different places is going to hit different lines. And so that just becomes a massive pain in the behind. So what we want to do then is we want to just, whoa, we want to just convert this into one single integral by using a change uh, or by using a substitution. Um, I like to think of it as a change of coordinates. And so what are we going to do? Well, let's draw these guys out. All right, let's draw these lines out. So here, these dotted blue lines slanting this way, uh, let's find the equation for these lines, right? What equations do these lines have? Uh, well, you got a slope, right? You can find a slope, um, which is negative one. And then uh, a point on this slope is going to be one zero uh, or zero comma one. So this line right here is going to be y equals negative x plus one, right? Or a better way to write it in our case is going to be x plus y is equal to one, okay? What about this line right here? Well, this line uh, is going to be, uh, it also has a slope of negative one, but you realize that this line is always going to be like two units above the other line, right? Because this right here, this distance is going to be two. And so this is going to be x plus y is equal to three or y is equal to negative x um, plus three. But again, we're going to prefer the second way of writing it. All right. Okay. So now what? Now, we got these other two lines that we want to figure out what their equations are, right? And so we thought them out, okay. This guy right here, uh, this is y is equal to x plus one. So really this is uh, y is equal to x plus one. And I'm gonna write it then as x minus y is equal to uh, negative one. All right, x minus y is equal to negative one. Um, so if I subtract one from both sides and subtract y from both sides, x minus y is equal to negative one. Okay, and then what? Uh, and then we want this guy down here, right? This guy right here, we want that y. And what you're gonna see then is, okay, um, this is y is equal to x minus one, and then that's really x minus y is equal to a positive one, okay? So now we got these four lines, we got uh, four equations. We've got this equation. We've got this equation. Um, what else we have? This equation here. Uh, that's a wrong color. I don't want to use that. 
we got this equation here, and we got this equation down here. And so we got four equations. Um, x minus y is equal to negative 1. x minus y is equal to positive 1. And then uh, x plus y is equal to 3. x plus y is equal to 1. And what's the point? Well, the point is this. Notice how these two guys, that's the wrong color. Notice how these two guys share the same starting guy, right? Is Share the same left-hand side. And notice how the top two guys share the same left-hand side. So what we're going to do then is I'm going to let u be equal to x minus y, and then I'm going to let v be equal to x plus y, okay? And usually in this first type of problem uh, that I've described here, you're always going to be able to do this. You're always going to be able to have some region where uh, once you draw it, you can construct these equations um, and have these left-hand sides be equal, okay? And so now I get u equals x minus y, v is equal to x plus y. So what does my double integral become, right? My double integral over r of x plus y squared sine x minus y dA, right, is going to be equal to now the double integral, all right, of, well, x plus y is v, so this is v squared. Now this is sine u, all right, and what is, it's not dA, it's going to be the Jacobian times and then either uh, du dv or dv du, which still needs to be uh, figured out. But we need to find out what this Jacobian guy is, okay? And so how do we find the Jacobian guy? Well, the Jacobian, since we solved for u and v, right? We have u is equal to, and we have v is equal to. Um, the Jacobian then is going to be the partial of u, the partial of u with respect to x, the partial of v respect to, uh, partial of u respect to y, the partial of v respect to x, the partial of v respect to y. And I'm gonna take this determinant, okay, of this matrix, all right, so I'm going to take the determinant of this matrix. Remember how to take determinants. It's like the cross product, and then we're going to take the inverse. All right, and so what, what does that mean? Well, okay, so in our case then, what's u partial x? Well, u partial x looks like it's going to be 1, right? So that's going to be 1. u partial y looks like it's going to be negative 1. Uh, v partial x looks like it's going to be 1. v partial y is negative 1. All right, take the determinant of this. What is it? It's 1 times 1 right, equals 1 times 1 minus 1 times negative 1, right, and then we do the diagonal that way. So it's always the diagonal minus the upper diagonal. So remember cross products, like this is exactly like the, the smaller 2 by 2 part of the cross products. And now um, this is equal to 2, right? And however, we got to take the inverse. So we got to take 2 and then we got to take the inverse. And so now that's equal to 1 half. And so j is equal to 1 half, and note that this guy has to be positive, all right, has to be positive. If it's not, take the absolute value, all right. So this is a super important point right here. People miss points on this all the time because uh, they just, you know, they're being boneheaded, and they don't uh, take the absolute value of a negative uh, Jacobian. So, all right. So now I got this double integral. It's v squared sine u times one half. And now we have to choose du uh, dv du or du dv. But really, it doesn't really matter, right? Because what is my region? My region now is really u equals one. U uh, or ugh, not u equals one. Okay. So it's up here. I got u equals negative one u equals 1, and then I got v equals 3, v equals 1, right? So if I sketch the new region, right, if I now, uh, now I got this guy, and then I have, uh, let's just sketch the new region first, right? And I make this the u axis, and this the v axis, u will go from negative 1 to 1, right? It'll be bounded by u equals negative 1 and u equals 1, which is these guys, u equals negative 1, u equals 1, and then v will be bounded by v equals 1 and v equals 3, right? So our region then just ends up being this square right here, 
And we know how to integrate over a square region. That's super easy. So I can just actually take whatever I want this to be um, as an integral, let's say dv du, and then v will go from one to three, and u will go from negative one to one. All right, and now I just do this integral, and it'll give me what this up here should have given me. And so let's let's do this integral now, and we're gonna get okay v. So we're gonna get negative one one. This becomes v cubed. Uh, I'm gonna move the one half out. Uh, this becomes v cubed over three sine u evaluated from one to three du. Okay, and then now what is this? This is three cubed. So that's nine and then minus a third. So this is one half times one, negative one. Uh, nine minus a third is 26 thirds sine u du, okay? And then, uh, and then now what? Okay, so now we move uh, 26 thirds out, we get 26 over six, um, the integral from one to negative one of sine u du. And oh, this is, this is, this is pretty much a trick, right? Because uh, what is this integral, right? What is the integral from negative one to one sine u du? This is uh, 26 over six times uh, the integral uh, or negative cosine u um, from one to negative one, right? After integrating, uh, the integral of sine u is negative cosine u and they're gonna go from negative one to one. And what is, okay, so this is 26 over, well, 26 over six is 13 thirds. So let's write that out, 13 thirds. Um, and then this becomes negative, right? This is going to negative cosine at one, okay? Plus cosine at negative one. All right, now let's, let's consider a minute what the cosine graph looks like. Cosine graph, okay, starts at one and goes down and then comes back up, right? And then over here on the negative side, it does the same thing. It goes down and it comes back up. So you realize that the cosine graph is just a mirror of itself, right? So cosine at negative, so cosine here, let's say I choose a random point x, right? So let's say I choose like x, right? x is here. Well, cosine at negative x is gonna take on the same value. Right? So cosine at, so what, what I'm trying to say is cosine of negative x is equal to cosine at x. So in this case, this is really 13 thirds times cosine, negative cosine at one plus cosine at one, right? Since this guy is just going to equal that guy as shown right there in the graph of cosine. So what happens is these guys actually cancel each other out and I get my integral is zero. Okay, and that's the correct answer. So, yeah, uh, a little almost, uh, you know, uh, oh my God, I can't, I can't think of the vocab word right now. I'm being, I'm, I'm just blanking out. But uh, a little disappointing for what we uh, were expecting. But, you know, this is, this is correct. This is exactly how you do it. You draw the region initially, and then you make the smart change of coordinates which you, which sometimes will get given away by uh, the, what's inside the integral. And it's also given away by what uh, your uh, lines end up being, the equation of your lines end up being. And then, you know, uh, make, uh, make the smart substitution there, calculate the Jacobian correctly, where it has to always be positive. And remember, there's also, also the inverse when you do u equals, all right? So when you have u equals and v equals, you'll get the inverse. And then draw the region, right? Draw the region in the new UV plane to help you set up your bounds and then just do your integral and you're done. So this is the first type of uh, switching the change of, uh, switching the integral uh, or switching the coordinates kind of problem where you're given your region. And so in the next example, then we're gonna see what happens when the region is defined in the bounds. And that actually gets kind of tricky, but it, it, it's more or less the same idea. So see you guys in the next video.